Thank you. Uh, I want to take the opportunity to, to congratulate the organizers, in particular Carlos, because it's, it's been a, a great conference. And thank you, everyone, to be, for being here. So now I'm going to talk about uh, this project, about uh, estimating uh, the Human Development Index at very high resolution using satellite images. This is a project that we are doing uh, with colleagues uh, from different centers, but this is mostly around the Global Policy Lab uh, in UC Berkeley. So probably all of you are familiar with the Human Development Index, but uh, I think it's important to, to maybe remind you about uh, what this is about. Well, it's a, a multidimensional indicator uh, of capabilities, it captures the health measured using life expectancy at birth, it captures education, measuring uh, the expected years of schooling that is associated with uh, achievements uh, from uh, kids, uh, also mean years of schooling uh, reflecting the education level of adults, and also the, sta the a decent standard of living which, which is captured uh, using the uh, GNI per capita. So uh, I'm not going to go into the definition, but uh, you just need to get the, the general idea. Uh, and this is probably the main indicator to assess uh, multidimensional development that we have. It's very popular. Uh, and it's, it was designed to measure things at the country level. Now, uh, we release every year the, the country estimates. and. Uh, and I have to, to <laughs> stress that this is a very political thing. Uh, we are part of the UN, and this index is used to eventually rank uh, countries that are, you know, the member state. Th th these are our bosses. So the reason why we are allowed to do that is because there is a, a, a General Assembly resolution that gives us the mandate or, or the possibility of uh, doing some independent research. But we need to follow some certain rules. And one of the main rules is that this has to be based on uh, solid uh, evidence. And here the issue of comparability becomes very important. So it's very hard to have good data that is comparable across country. So this means that in general, we have faced a lot, many years uh, restrictions in order to advance towards to, to more desegregated level of data. Uh, there are many experiences of countries that they have the freedom to develop their own human development index, but we don't have a comprehensive measure uh, across country. Except for uh, recently, uh, this paper by uh, Iñaki Permanger and uh, Smith, and they, well, but this is a, an independent project of researchers that were able to develop um, estimates of human development index at the province level for the entire world. So the question that we try to answer is whether we can use uh, satellite images to predict, to make predictions about development indicators in a consistent way. Why this becomes important for us? First, because now we have a lot of new information that is available that we can use, and there is a lot of evidence that this can be done. And second, and this is important for, for our purposes, is that this data follows certain standards, so it gives us the, the, the opportunity to uh, measure things in a way that cannot be questioned, and also that will allow us to, to make progress in in tracking what is happening with development at a very granular level, sorry. So, so this is a very uh, broad agenda, but here I'm, I'm gonna concentrate um, only on uh, the emphasis uh, on, the, on the HDI. And I, I have to emphasize that this is experimental. And so, so far we are not sharing the data, but I think it's, it's just to open a, a conversation. This is not official. And we, have, we can do many things. And uh, we are going to be talking today about downscaling. So what is downscaling? Is that eventually we have data at the country level and how we go from that to provincial level and how we go to that to municipal level. So, and just to give you an, ex uh, uh, an idea of how this works, we have 
well, 193 member states. But typically, we publish information, at least for this project, we have data for 189 uh, countries. In terms of provinces, we are working with uh, 1,700 units. And if we go to, to, to municipalities, we can eventually cover more than 60,000 uh, units. So the methodology, I will try to, to be, um, to make things simple, because actually the methodology is not very complicated. Uh, it takes, um, in a very flexible day, in a very flexible way, satellite data, uh, using daytime images. We also complement this with something that has been tried before quite a bit, which is nighttime lights. And, but the main innovation is here. And what happens is that we have images that uh, through a process that is, is based on, on some algorithms of uh, random convolutional features, that is, it captures some of the uh, principles of uh, convolution, convolutional neural networks, but in a much simpler way. So we transform an image in a vector of numbers. We don't know the meaning of those numbers, but it's just a vector of 4,000 numbers for each image. So then we have uh, information nested there, and then we use that information in order to understand something. In this case, the Human Development Index, that for, if for a certain area we have a, a value of the Human Development Index, we can train the model to understand what of the features that are coming from here are predicting, are relevant to predict the human development index, and we find the coefficients. In order to do that, we cannot use a very simple or less regression, we use the reach, which allow us to reduce, in practice, allow us to reduce the number of active uh, coefficients. So, now the results. <clears throat> so, here it's going, this is, this is an exercise that goes from province level to province level. So, I mentioned that there is this paper by Permanger and uh, Smith that computes HDI at the level of provinces. So, in this exercise, what we do is to try to, to we take some part of the sample like 80 percent and we and we run these regressions we learn and then we test this with the rest of the observations and these are the results so the the fit is very good uh, and the r square is 78 percent so this gives us an, an idea of the potential if, for instance what happens if we have information for certain areas of the planet and not for the others so we can use that information that we have to learn how to identify levels of human development index and then predict that over the other areas. Now, this exercise is about downscaling. So here is what happens if we have information only at the country level and we want to now uh, try to find information at the province level. We can test this because we have the, the data from Permanger and Smith. So here what we do is first uh, run a model <laughs> that uh, it's a model in differences that captures the um, within country uh, differences of, of the different provinces. <laughs> and then using the country level, we recover the, 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 the final number. And the results are very impressive. So you can see, so these are the final results. Um, and we have that the, the fit is, is excellent with, the, with an R square of 96%. So, I mean, this is very good news because it tells us that eventually, even if we don't have very disaggregated level and we just have uh, aggregated level, national level data, and we have access to these numbers from satellites, we can get pretty accurate predictions at this level, at the, at the regional, at, at the state level or, prov or province level, which covers like 1,700 areas in the plan.
Now, um, well, this is the, the result of this exercise. Uh, so in a way, it's not uh, very different from what, uh, uh, what we can find in the Permanger and Smith's paper, but the, the interesting thing is that we were able to generate it just using uh, country level data with satellite images. <laughs> now, do you have a little bit of water? Uh, uh, water. So now, but the question is, can we move to the next level? Can we go from um, province level to municipality level? The problem we have is that we don't, uh, we don't have information of the HDI at the province level that we can use in order to actually test the validity of the exercise. Uh, however, we have other variables uh, for which we can identify the values at the municipal level. So one of them is night light, because precisely this is something that has been used as a proxy of development. And we can see that if we do this exercise, jumping from um, province level to municipal, municipal level, the, the fit is very good and it's 78%. So it's not as good as in the other case, but it is still very, very good. We also have information about the International Well Index. Um, sorry. <coughs> This is coming from mostly from DHS surveys. And also, we can, um, using the same procedure, uh, find a very good fit with an R square of 0.75, which is, again, not as good as the 96% we found before, but very good. So based on this, then we're encouraged to, to go to the next level using the, the Human Development Index. And, um, and this is what we find. So these are estimates of the Human Development Index that jump from the province level to the municipal level uh, using uh, satellite data, and these are over 60,000 uh, uh, small areas. So I think we, we are, sorry. We are <coughs> very encouraged uh, for these results. Now let's try to, to connect this with the, so why we are doing this? Well, it's, it's gonna be very important in order to improve policy making. So this is just an exercise of what we are gaining by doing this exercise. Uh, here we have quintiles uh, based on municipal level uh, HDI. Uh, and here we have the bars reflecting the previous classification, the quintiles, just taking into account provinces. And, uh, and we can see how uh, the, there are, we, we can uncover things that are hidden uh, if we just use uh, the province level exercise. For instance, here we have that 17% of the population uh, are, were, are labeled using uh, province level information in the third quintile, while in fact they are part of the top of the distribution. And of course, we can improve targeting in the other, in the other part of the distribution. But the, the most in important thing for us is that is the space that this research opens in order to understand what is happening in the world today and what is is expected to happen tomorrow. So many of the problems we are facing as part of the Anthropocene context are um, very difficult, are very complex, um, and, um, 
we are trying to find information that can give us an uh, indication of what is going to happen because of climate change on human development in different parts of the world. So um, we are going to be, for instance, uh, launching in the next few weeks a platform that is going to be giving us this information, information about mortality, information about what's going to happen to workers. Probably next year, uh, we're going to also release information about what's happening with uh, agriculture, what's happening with damage coming from climate change. So, and all of this information is going to come in a very granular way. So I think we're going to need uh, some tools in order to, to make sense of this information and use it. And crosses this information with other variables. So we think that uh, in order to do that, I mean, to go to the next level in this type of analysis, it is critical that we can um, disaggregate variables that uh, we know are important in analysis. One of them is uh, the human development index, but I think for us, this is just a start. So uh, I'm gonna close with the conclusion. So what we have shown, is that there are promising results disaggregating uh, development variables, in this case, the Human Development Index. Uh, first, it is possible to do this uh, in a horizontal way, province to province. Uh, also, it is, in, in our view, very, very promising, the ability to have to downscale variables from national level data which is what we have in uh, which what is more common uh, to to the next level that is uh, province level data and also we see that there is a very interesting space to go to the next level we, we are still doing more research on this to to get a good validation but i think we are uh, on track on that um, as i mentioned now we are trying to push this agenda to to include more variables, um, also to to make uh, to to have more clarity on how how we can validate to understand what works, what doesn't work, uh, and also we are working in 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 in, um, in making these these resources uh, more accessible to researchers, because I think this is very powerful, uh, and it would be important that uh, can be used by in different parts of the world. So. Uh, hopefully we are going to be able to construct some platforms or things like that that would make this easy for other research researchers to use. <laughs> um, and of course, uh, this is very important for a better formulation of policies and also for pushing the next uh, generation of research. So I'm going to stop here. Thank you. <laughs>